depending on how you fall on the religious debate, I think you're going to like the guy that we bring out here. It was about a couple of years ago now, he posted this thing on YouTube called Why I Hate Religion But Love Jesus. And it caused quite a stir. His name is Jefferson Bethsky. I'm looking forward to having him in the chair. There's a lot to explore. Modern conversation about Christianity, the role religion plays in it, uh, the position they have on you know, uh, equal rights uh, for all citizens, including gay marriage. So we're going to get into that uh, conversation. But first, just to get you set, here's a clip. What if I told you Jesus came to abolish religion? What if I told you voting Republican really wasn't his mission? What if I told you Republican doesn't automatically mean Christian, and just because you call some people blind doesn't automatically give you vision? I mean, if religion is so great, why has it started so many wars? Why does it build huge churches but fails to feed the poor? Tell single moms God doesn't love them if they've ever had a divorce, but in the Old Testament, God actually calls religious people whores. And by the way, that clip by now more than 26 million views online. Jefferson Betsky! How's it going? Right. Good to see you. Thank you. I'm excited. Right. Good, good. Good. That's, I mean, 26 million views plus, mm -hmm. that's a thing, right? Yeah, I never would have thought more than my mom and friends would have seen it, but... Really? Mm -hmm. What was the impetus to do it for you? For me, so, it was actually a poem written when I was at a non-Christian college, and I just had too many conversations where the students would say something to the effect of, well, I don't want to be a Christian because I have tattoos and I want to drink beer. And I'm just like... Really? Like, is it, you know? And I just kept getting this on and on and on to the point where I realized it wasn't their fault that they thought that's what Christianity was. It was actually kind of our fault, you know, the church's right. fault for kind of purporting that, so. Well, what do you do about the conversation around the role of people who are gay or lesbian mm -hmm. or bi or transgendered mm -hmm. or whatever in the church? Because even people who are, like, against same-sex marriage mm -hmm. say, I think homosexuality is a sin, mm -hmm. but I'm okay with the sinner, that conversation, mm -hmm. but it still presupposes that you don't think, not you, but they yeah. don't think gay people are normal, mm -hmm. and that's the fundamental breakdown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think it just, again, gets down to the conversation. If you did check out the book, um, yeah. I talk about my mom in there and how my mom Your lives a gay, gay right? lifestyle. Yeah. They're actually getting married very soon. I love my mom to death. I was raised by a single mom, so there's that real closeness that you just can never leave, you know? And this, this is what I, I say, just again, it gets back to the conversation because she loves me, I love her. She doesn't call me a bigot, I don't call her a bigot. You yeah. know, whatever it is, like we just love each other and we're family and we might disagree. And I personally think that's harder. That's a lot harder to have a conversation when you maybe are almost settling on the fact you disagree and there might not be progress from there. But hey, I love you, let's have dinner, let's talk, let's grow. So. Right, but that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool yeah. if organizations don't get involved in politics and tell them this group of people don't have the rights. Yeah. Th or this veteran doesn't have the right to visit his partner. And the reason yeah. I, and I love having this conversation with you because you can have a philosophical yeah. debate about this because the religious community needs people mm -hmm. who are saying that's not our fight. Yeah, that's a really good way to put it. And that's almost, I think that's what we need to say. I think, um, you know, when I read church history even, for example, what I see is that Every worldview still has this idea of being exclusive, meaning that like, it's still exclusive to itself, right? It's just what's the exclusiveness. And so when I read the church history, the thing that made Christianity explode was this idea that, especially in first century Roman culture, right, this idea of gender barriers crushed, socioeconomic barriers crushed, yeah. it made it really unique. And I think we need to get back to a little bit of that reconciliation element about Jesus and saying, hey, let's have the conversation. And, and like we just said, that's not our fight. Yeah. And personally, I don't know what it's like in Canada, but in the States, my generation specifically, I see us saying that pretty loud. Um, for people who don't believe in evolution, this is actually evolution and adaptation in its mm -hmm. purest form, watching the church have to evolve. Like, it simply has to evolve and adapt to where people are. I would totally agree. I would say the Western church is in a cataclysmic point right now. Um, I personally think it, it's the ship has sailed. Um, I think Western Christ, Christian dumb, which is pretty much an experiment that's been going the last... D-O-M. Yeah, yeah. Not, <laughs> not D-U-M-B, hopefully. But um, I think it's almost a failed experiment over the last 500 years, and I think it's showing itself as inadequate. And what I mean by that is that muddiness of how it pulls into politics or pulls into, it's almost, Christianity has been prostituted the last 500 yeah. years. And I think especially in America, what I see is that it's, we're going away from that, and I honestly think that's good news, so. Boat rocker, sir. That's know, it, you must feel little, like that, right? Yeah, um, the emails say so, but yeah, as I, I don't get the nicest ones. And Why do you read them? Do you read them? I try, I mean, my emails and all my YouTube videos, yeah. so don't email me, don't email me. Okay, yeah. but I'm just joking. <laughs> but, um, because I, I just really like engaging with people. I really like conversation, and, and, and I also enjoy feedback, so, yeah. 
Do you ever have moments where you're not sure if you believe what you're doing? You know, because when you look mm -hmm. at when you're, because anybody at any age goes through this, but certainly when you're young, you look at the stuff you've put online, mm -hmm. and then if you've lived your life, you've traveled, you've met more people, yeah. you've gained empathy, insight, yeah. and go, ah, I don't know. 100%, 100%, I think, um, let, let's, I mean, hopefully, if your answer is no to that, then you're pretty stagnant, I would argue, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that the, I wouldn't recant of any like world view, but like for, take the Why I Hate Religion uh, poem, for example. There's things I'd articulate that in a little bit better way. One lesson I learned real sharply is that that word religion doesn't mean what it, in Seattle, it means something different than it does in Dallas or something, you know, the Bible Belt. So yeah, so when I look back, I'm just, I, gotta, I, I wanna try to be humble and say, I wanna grow, I wanna learn. And what a real pleasure, man. Congrats on the book and, uh, and please come back and have another Thank conversation. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Jesus, right there. Greater than religion.